Linkism Media. Linkism Media. Hello and welcome. I am Mario Talamu. My guest today, Robel Alamu, is a PhD student at the University of Toronto. Robel serves as Director of Communications and Human Rights Reporting Editor for Amhara Association of America or AAA. AAA released its 2021 annual report on recorded human rights violations against Amharas. In this program, we will discuss on it. Robil, welcome to Mingizem Media. Thank you for having me, Riot. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. I would like to start from your association, AAA. Please tell us about AAA. Certainly. Uh, so AAA stands for the Amhara Association of America. The Amhara Association of America is a long-standing diaspora organization based in North Charlotte, Carolina, uh, but has members in other places, such as myself. Uh, this is an organization that's been very active in the Ethiopian Amhara diaspora, uh, working to advocate for the Amhara people in Ethiopia, and really working towards highlighting the human rights violations, speaking to policymakers, speaking to uh, journalists, medias, human rights organizations, to ensure the plight of the Amhara people, and specifically the Amhara genocide, gets its due attention. Uh, and this uh, has been activities that have been going on uh, for many years, uh, going back to at least 2016, uh, when the Amhara movement or struggle uh, in the Gondor or the Amhara region began uh, with Colonel Demek Azodu and the events that transpired under the TPLF-led government. Uh, and now under the current government, as we can see, uh, these crimes are ongoing against the Amhara people, uh, led by the uh, or under the government led by the Oromo Prosperity Party. Uh, and so this advocacy is ongoing. Uh, and a lot of this, um, a lot of these uh, advocacy activities uh, centers around human rights reporting. So AAA uh, spends a great deal of resources on human rights reporting. Uh, the funding comes from our donors who donate. Uh, this comes from our Amhara community uh, in the international community. Uh, and this uh, funding goes towards funding human rights investigators on the ground in Ethiopia to conduct independent investigations into the human rights violations of Amhara people. Thank you, Robil. Now, can you summarize AAA's report for us? Certainly. Uh, so this was the 2021 annual report on human rights violations against the Amhara people in Ethiopia. The report basically summarizes AAA's human rights reporting uh, over uh, last year, 2021, between January 1st and December. And the report was published uh, last Friday and can be found actually at AAA's website at www.amharaamerica.org and across our social media platforms on Facebook and Twitter. The report serves as a compendium of AAA's human rights reporting over 2021, uh, in which AAA deployed a team of human rights investigators in Ethiopia to assess areas where alleged human rights violations took place. Uh, and so these findings were gathered from survivors, internally displaced people, uh, medical professionals, local officials, uh, both on site and through remote interviews. Uh, just um, on a very general level, the summary of the findings are as follows. We have about 3,308 people that were killed, 1,252 people who were injured, 1,009 cases of rape or gang rape, 111 arbitrary arrests, 600 and, sorry, 62 uh, cases of abduction and forced evictions, impacting at least 1,517 people, and an estimated 5 million IDPs, which had to flee their homes, and this was in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. The main perpetrators of these human rights violations were the Tigray People's Liberation Front, or TPLF, the Oromo Liberation Army, or OLA, uh, the Gumuz Militants, the Sheko Militants, and Sudan Defense Forces. And in many cases, some of these perpetrators had backing from the government apparatus, uh, the human rights abuses occurred in the Amhara, Oromia, Benishangu, Gumuz, uh, southern regions, as well as Addis Ababa, the capital. Uh, however, many of the alleged human rights violations uh, over the course of this year were not investigated due to restrictions in access. Uh, so this report does not claim to be exhaustive or fully comprehensive. This is just looking at selected human rights violations and serves to sh show an indication of the pattern of crimes taking place uh, under this regime and by these different uh, violent armed groups against the Amhara people. And in, with hopes that we can eventually lead to um, holding perpetrators of these crimes accountable. Uh, and also uh, this is just also a, a very good, we believe tool and resource that 
our community can use uh, in order to do advocacy uh, th that's very high quality, that can be used for lobbying purposes, uh, and eventually for justice and accountability measures. Mm. There are uh, different chapters of the report. Chapter one of the report gives political context. It says ethnic federalism, turned ethnic apartheid, and civil war. Please elaborate it for the audience who haven't read the report. Certainly. Uh, so the, the, that chapter, it's very important because really it's setting out how, for example, the constitution that was uh, drafted in the 1990s uh, by the TPLF-led uh, EPRDF, uh, and the OLF, how these organizations came together, excluded the Amhara people, redrew administrative maps, and enacted what we call an apartheid system, or, or what we refer to as an apartheid system. And when we say apartheid system, we're referring to uh, basically constitutionalized apartheid, where Amhara people and other minorities across the country were instantly made second-class citizens. So if we go to areas such as the Oromia and Beni Shangul-Gumuz regions, the regional constitutions actually explicitly uh, uh, exclude the Amhara civilians and other regional minorities as rightful landowners or rightful residents. And so this system has resulted in political exclusion uh, from uh, targeting, uh, incentivizing, uh, in, uh, fighting between ethnic groups, uh, and then as well as ethnic cleansing. So in many re regions, for example, we have disputed areas uh, on the north of the so-called Amhara region and the Tigray region, for example, we have the area known as Welkait, uh, which also includes the Tagade uh, district, the Humara uh, and Adlamt areas, as well as uh, Raya. And these areas, for example, were a very good case study of how Amhara residents were singled out uh, and they not only experienced systematic genocide, but as well as an apartheid uh, system that was enforced on them. Uh, in the context of this report, however, we see this taking place in many districts of the Oromia and the Beni Shangul Gumuz uh, regions. For example, in Oromia, we have uh, districts of, um, of uh, within North Shoa, specifically the Dera area, in which there was targeted human rights violations against the Amharas. Uh, and this was an area, again, that was annexed away and where, and where the, re the residents were actually uh, facing ethnic cleansing, persecutions, uh, and not just by the um, non-state affiliated armed groups, but also by, uh, you know, regional forces and regional officials and all of this. And then in the Beni Shangul Gumuz region, for example, we have the Matekal zone, where a very similar uh, case took place. This was a, a, a district that was formerly part of the uh, Godjam uh, historic province, uh, modern day Amhara region. And the residents, the Amhara residents, the Aga residents and other minorities were targeted by the Beni Shangul Gumuz uh, regional government, now the Beni Shangul Gumuz Prosperity Party, uh, as well as the Gumuz uh, militants and the Sheko militants. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's a, a lot of uh, details about this, but uh, when we say, when we're trying to frame this apartheid system, really we're trying to draw a connection between the targeted human rights violations and mm -hmm. how they've become institutionalized and the need really for reform. So this is a system that uh, explicitly excludes Amharas, uh, goes after Amharas, and there's a great need to uh, implement reforms. Thank you. There are photographs of deceased victims with names included. There are photographs of uh, injured victims. There are personal stories that touch hearts. Please share one or two of them for the audience. Certainly. Um, so as you guys have seen in this report, uh, it's really very comprehensive in terms of mm. including names, photographs, of victims, uh, and so there's so many stories uh, to read. Really yes, 469 pages. Therefore, I know we can't cover all of them. Just to uh, mention some of just two of them. Certainly. Yeah. Uh, so I'd like to draw on uh, a couple of these stories. Uh, for example, there was one incident uh, that took place in early or mid-April of 2021 in the Oromia region, specifically the East Wadlaga zone, and this was an incident in which the Oromia Regional Special Forces uh, actually committed a mass killing a massacre against at least 27 Amhara civilians, as well as three Gumu civilians. And so in this mass killing, uh, we actually collected testimonies from residents and survivors, as well as names and identities of the victims. And if we go towards some of these uh, quotes, uh, it's very heartbreaking, but it also illustrates 
what has been going on in these areas. For example, one of the residents in the Limu Wareda, which actually escaped the attack and fled to the Beni Shangul-Gumuz region, uh, said the following. The OLA militias have been killing people, looting various properties, and destroying the remaining possessions of the ethnic Amharas since at least 2018, having exposed us to severe attacks additionally. The Oromia Special Forces took the weapons we were trying to use to defend ourselves from the attacks. By the same token, more than 30 influential Amharas were also subjected to unlawful arrest by the Special Police Forces. In this way, both OLA militias and the Special Forces were pushing us to leave the areas jointly, though we had no alternative to leave because there was no protection. Moreover, the Special Forces prohibited us from selling our crops and allowed the Karos to rob the crops by breaking into our storage. Being empty-handed now, more than 900 households, at least 3,000 people, have been displaced to Kamashi Zone. So this quote, I think, is very prolific and important to highlight because uh, it kind of illustrates how it's not just the rebel forces, the OLA milit milit militants, the Oromo Liberation Army, as is commonly known, or the sometimes the Oromo Liberation Front, Shenne. Um, it, it not only illustrates the destructive force of this group, but how in this instance, there was a direct case of collaboration with mm -hmm. the Oromia Special Forces. Mm -hmm. And this should be a very big cause of alarm because this is an indication that these forces in this instance and many others have directly colluded. That means there is support from the government structure. Mm -hmm. So the Oromia Regional Government, the Oromia Prosperity Party, led by uh, Shimad Le Sabdisa uh, and the Prime Minister, uh, basically are complicit in this incident. And this is not the only incident where the Oroma, the Oromia Special Forces were actually had a, had a hand in the atrocities. Mm -hmm. um, so that's mm -hmm. one story. Uh, I can move on to another one as well. Yeah, um, it's very painful because they collaborate, these United States actors collaborate with the government once with the Oromo Special Forces. That's very painful. Yeah, you can proceed to the second one. Certainly. Um, so just for a change of pace now, this incident took place in the Amhara region. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was actually in the town of Mirsa in the North Wadlow zone, where at least 96 Amhara civilians were killed by invading TPLF forces. Uh, at least six were injured. And among the deceased victims were actually children, mothers, and disabled persons. And so this took place uh, between August 9th and December 19th of 2021. Um, as I'm sure everyone is aware, uh, during this period, there was a very brutal occupation of districts of the Amhara region by the TPLF forces. The TPLF forces committed uh, many systemic crimes. And in this, throughout this report, really, uh, there's a lot of crimes that are attributed to the TPLF forces. And so in this instance, uh, there's multiple quotes uh, but really, um, each each one of them is is very uh, uh, intense. But let me just choose one really quick and just kind of illustrate what happened. Um, one one source for AAA uh, actually said the following. Uh, so after the commandos left the town, they the TPLF went house to house and killed anyone they could find. They killed three members in a single family. They have no mercy even on mentally ill persons. They killed four such people. That's just one quote. There was another one that said, after the fighting ended on August 22nd, they, the TPLF militias, began searching homes. When they arrived at my home, they started shouting, come out, but I was not there. My wife kept silent. She never replied. Immediately, they began firing. One of the bullets hit one of the men on their leg. They then broke into the house. They shot everyone who was inside. Two of them died instantly while the others survived. They did not even spare the six month old infant's mother. They shot her to death while her infant was crying on the bed. Yeah. So this, yeah. this is a very uh, saddening and heartbreaking story, uh, mm -hmm. but it illustrates really uh, the extent of the atrocities of the war crimes that were committed by the invading TPLF forces. Uh, just to add some context, this was a period in which um, following the June 2021 uh, unilateral uh, withdrawal from the Tigray region, the TPLF forces advanced into the Amhara region and occupied many areas. Uh, even to this day, there are some districts that remain occupied by the TPLF forces, uh, including in the uh, North Gondor uh, zone, the Wag uh, Himara zone, and uh, adjacent areas. 
So districts such as Upper Gele and Wag, um, at Al Lemta, Adi Arkai, uh, and then disputed areas in the Raya area. Mm -hmm. And so these areas actually were not even covered in the report because our investigators couldn't reach them. There was a large limitation due to security um, uh, lapses uh, during the time of the occupation. Our team was unable to actually go to these areas out of fear of, uh, you know, attacks from the militias. Uh, but there are also other restraints, financial restraints. Uh, the team is quite small. Uh, and in addition, even the regional government itself caused issues. But in the context of this incident in MERSA, there's a few things that stand out about it. And really, it's that firstly, this MERSA incident of 96 Amhara civilians being killed was not covered, you know, in the mainstream media. Mm -hmm. And so the lack of coverage really illustrates the need for AAA, an organization like AAA and others, to report on these crimes uh, and to encourage these uh, platforms to report on it and then eventually for the policymakers to acknowledge these crimes. Mm -hmm. Because these are large numbers uh, mm -hmm. and there were many others. There, there was a pattern of large-scale massacres across various other places in the Amhara region and in, in adjacent regions. Uh, you know, there was Kobo and in, in, in also in the northwest Lozon of Amhara region, there was uh, many other large-scale massacres. And in this one, uh, really, we see a very um, dark picture of what took place where even vulnerable people were not spared. So when we talk about these vulnerable people, it shows how they were not militants. They were clearly, you know, a, a small child or a disabled person is not a, is not a militant by any means. And so these were deliberate killings, uh, atrocities and war crimes against civilian populations. And so the, the, the quotes really paint a very uh, vivid picture. Uh, I encourage everyone to really go through the report and read, uh, you know, rep incident report by incident, because there are many stories like these. You know, these are just two small samples uh, mm -hmm. within the larger report. Mm -hmm. It's very heartbreaking when you say uh, it doesn't cover in the mainstream media. Uh, why do you think, uh, why is the Western downplayed the suffering of Amharas or other uh, mainstream media uh, doesn't cover about these kind of stories? Certainly. Um, so I, I think there's a, a certain framing within the media. Um, sometimes there's this uh, concept of the underdog, and I think the framing of the conflict in Tigray uh, had a little bit of a selective nature. Uh, so there was more of an interest in Tigray region, and then this took away uh, from coverage of areas in Amhara and in other adjacent areas. Um, however, thanks to the efforts of AAA and other organizations, uh, some of these crimes did get their due attention, but more work needs to be done to highlight this more. But thanks to the work of AAA, for example, we had uh, publications from Amnesty, from Human Rights Watch, uh, Reuters, AFP, uh, Al Jazeera, and many others cover some of the um, atrocities. But what this report tells us is that it's only the tip of the iceberg. Even our report, again, was not just, it wasn't completely comprehensive or exhaustive of all the crimes due to several limitations. So there's also something there about why uh, there's a need for our community to organize, self-organize, conduct these independent investigations, which require funding. These are, these are funds that are collected from our donors, from our community. So a, a self-financed uh, self uh, investigations that can then go towards enhancing um, or, or you know, influencing other platforms, other medias, international medias to report on this. And there is some success in this. Unfortunately, the plight of Amharas has largely been something that has been less interesting. Uh, for example, we know that many of these crimes preceded November 2020. So now that we have, you know, talks of accountability and uh, fixations on certain areas, you know, we saw about, all about the coverage, the extensive coverage of the alleged crimes in the Welkite area, or as they refer to it as Western Tigray. Uh, and really, you know, th that's a really good illustration, actually, because we saw how uh, a team of researchers from the University of Gondar was able to uncover evidence of mass graves, uh, estimated, you know, death tolls in the thousands of historic victims of the Amhara genocide. And so when we talk about Amhara genocide also, this is a genocide that has historic roots. We can go back to the 27 years under TPLF uh, from 1991 to 2018. 
we can go to the last you know four years under the current prosperity party of Prime Minister Abiy, and then we can even go back. There's very historic ties to the uh, you know the fascist um, invasion by the, the fascist Italian Empire, uh, and in between. And really, uh, when we talk about this genocide, again, we're saying in this case, you know, especially with the TPLF involvement, there are perpetrators who are still around, who have not faced accountability, who have not been uh, given due attention. In fact, uh, when Prime Minister Abiy decided to free the political prisoners, uh, he also freed, you know, the likes of uh, Sibat Nagga, the likes of uh, Abai Woldu. Uh, these were individuals who were top TPLF officials, and we saw how in the report by the Gunder University, how Sibat Nagga was named uh, within the context of the mass graves, the concentration camps. Mm. So this, um, this really begs the question of, you know, what more can we do to ensure there's visibility to these types of things? We hope that this report uh, can be a tool and a resource for our community to advocate uh, to join us. For example, right now, AAA is running a phone campaign uh, to be a voice for the victims of the, the mass arrests. There's a, as you know, there's a mass crackdown happening against the journalists, security officials, uh, activists, um, uh, really Amharas from all walks of life, and including the final patriots. So the final patriots, um, in, in, in the context of this war, resisted the TPLF invasion. These were everyday people who took up arms to defend the, uh, their homes and uh, to prevent these war crimes from happening. You know, so I see it very similarly to what we're seeing in Ukraine. You know, Russia, Ukraine, there's a conflict. Uh, the people are coming out to defend themselves. Uh, so the Amhara defense, the, the, the right to self-defense is the same. Uh, and unfortunately, the regime has, has decided to make a, a mass crackdown on the Fano, uh, suspected Fano, uh, suspected supporters of Fano. Uh, and so we've started this global campaign of I am Fano. Uh, there's a media, social media hashtag, I am Fano, uh, but a collection of Amhara organizations, including AAA, uh, has been involved in organizing uh, or promoting these protests. Um, these protests are scheduled uh, for the coming weeks. We encourage everyone to show up and to be a part of that movement. It's very important to show solidarity. Uh, but this, I think this report really um, fits into all of that in a very strategic way because when it comes to you know making the case, for example, for the Amhara genocide, um, it's really important to have data. When we're doing our lobbying, it's very important to have reliable, high-quality data, uh, names, dates, perpetrators, incidents, all of those details, because it's not enough just to have a hashtag. It's not enough just to uh, say there's a genocide. You need to have some type of evidence. And there's lots of uh, historic work that, that was done uh, but there was a lapse, uh, especially in recent years. We know um, there's an import, there's an issue, especially in the Ethiopian context, where uh, state uh, medias have not been, you know, yeah. objective. So we need uh, independent voices to come and to talk about it. And even in the in the context of this crackdown, we saw how journalists like Maazam Muhammad, we saw how people like Ab uh, Meskaram Abarra. Uh, Tamaskan uh, Dessaling, how these types of individuals who were talking about the issues, uh, who were trying to help the victims, be a voice of the victims, how they were singled out and how they were detained, not once, but in some cases multiple times. So Ma'aza, for example, was uh, a, a very uh, staunch um, uh, advocate for the Amhara people, especially for the victims of the genocide in Oromia. Uh, you know, you can see the details of that in this investigation, but the regime decided to apprehend her. So it's a, it's a huge travesty of justice. But as we advocate for her to be freed, we also need, you know, the evidence to show that what she was talking about, there was merit to that. So uh, that's where I think this all fits in. Um, there are challenges, uh, you know, there's also geopolitical interests, but I think that doesn't mean that, you know, this it's a lost cause. It doesn't mean that people have to stop uh, advocating, talking about the issues. In fact, it means there's more work to be done. Mm -hmm. And this is a very large diaspora that has a very high capacity. Um, it's very important for everyone to be uh, involved. And really, this is something also that it's not just, you know, ad advocating for the victims of Amhara genocide. You don't have to be an Amhara to do that. You just have to be someone who uh, is interested in justice, who's interested in uh, humanity. It's, it's a question of humanity.
So that's how I see it. I hope that answers the question. Mm, yeah, you address it. Uh, I think you you are feeling the huge gap, especially in English language. There is a huge gap, and you are trying to fill it. And I think you are succeeded. Uh, many appreciate uh, triple A workers, and also some of the people. I heard criticisms about the report, for example, why triple A didn't use the word genocide and like that. Uh, did you read or heard about that? And what is your answer? Thank you for this question. Um, so yes, there has been a little bit of noise. Uh, actually, AAA hosted uh, a session on Twitter spaces in which the team uh, came forth, took questions and answers from the, uh, the audience. Uh, people were allowed to come up and speak. We addressed not only the report, but the concerns around the report. Uh, we've seen the social media noise, uh, but also, you know, the report has received tremendous uh, uh, support and people have been very happy about it. Again, this is a compendium of uh, reports, uh, basically of our human rights reporting over triple, or, of, or sorry, over 2021. And so considering this collection of reports, uh, the title is intended to reflect that. This is a collection of reports on massacres. Uh, AAA has always believed, or sorry, has always, um, uh, you, you know, advocate for the Amhara genocide. You can see the hashtag being used across the social media channels, uh, um, hashtag Amhara genocide on the Twitter, on the Facebook. Um, you can see the phone campaigns. Uh, you can see the advocacy. You can see historic uh, uh, engagements with policymakers, that some of them that were uploaded onto YouTube that made it to the internet. Uh, so I think people who have, follow, have, who have been following the work, people who have read the report, the report itself uh, does touch on the elements of the genocide. Uh, and so I think there was uh, maybe some misconception that maybe because the term wasn't used in the, the cover page that somehow this was a denial, but this is not the case. Mm -hmm. AAA has never denied the Amhara genocide. In fact, it's quite the opposite. This, and this document actually is a huge... Um, source of evidence for the Amhara genocide. This is something that can be used uh, to, to further that case. Uh, and this is something that, you know, it's a very complex thing, but really for any effort to expose it, the first, the prerequisite is to have the data, is to have the documentation. The documentation work is the most important aspect of making that case. And so all concerned parties, all, uh, you know, community members are encouraged to, to use it in that way. However, with that being said, uh, AAA is open to feedback, it's open to criticism. Uh, people can reach out via email, via direct messages, via whatever the case might be. Uh, this has been said in the past and AAA has, con has actually addressed many of the, of the concerns. For example, in that Twitter space session, uh, which was recorded, uh, many of the points were made. Uh, there, there have been um, uh, posts by some of our team members addressing some of the, the criticisms. Uh, so I think the, the, the genocide question uh, definitely was addressed, but in short, it's that uh, AAA recognizes the Amhara genocide, but this is a report, again, that uh, not only touches, touches on that, but is designed to be uh, a resource, but is also, uh, you know, in accordance with uh, human rights reporting. So if people go out and look at standards of human rights reporting uh, from major uh, institutions, they can look at that, they can compare, and AAA has been uh, best crafted to be in line with that. With that being said, you know, this is not a, a report that was compiled by uh, human rights uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, authorities or professionals. This is, this is an advocacy or advocacy organization uh, that has compiled this report because there was a, a lapse in the coverage. So there's a very strong point that needs to be made about that. There were other concerns I was made aware of. For example, people had some misconceptions about the map. Uh, the map used in the report uh, was actually intended to be intended to show actually um, as a result of the war the de facto control of different territories uh, spe specifically actually uh, within the Amhara region without in the adjacent areas the disputed territories as we know as a result of the the conflict uh, there were um, a lot of there was a lot of violence in the areas disputed between the Amhara and Tigray regions I touched on this briefly earlier but for example there was the Maikadra incident the Maikadra incident was uh, took place in November uh, 2020. Uh, so it was not included in this report because it was outside of the time range. Uh, but AAA actually did publish a separate report, investigative report on the Micadra incident. And so I encourage people to look out for that 
that's another very big resource. Um, AAA was able to independently verify the names and identities of 1,515 victims of the Maikadra massacre, Amhara victims that were killed by the TPLF allied forces. Uh, this was in, you know, Maikadra is located in the Humara area, uh, part of the disputed territories, Humara Walgait, uh, in that area. Uh, and so as a result of the war, we know that the Walgait area and the Humara areas and the Tagade uh, districts were actually uh, restored. The occupation uh, by the TPLF forces and the illegal annexation was reversed. Unfortunately, this did not take place for Talamt and for areas of Raya, uh, north of Kobo, especially the disputed ter uh, districts. And so the purpose of this map was just to highlight that and to show that uh, these were still under TPLF uh, occupation. And so it, it was just as a, as a guideline. However, AAA has, uh, did not mean that for that to be, you know, rightful administrative boundaries or anything to that effect. Uh, and this was also explained uh, in addition, there was, I think, a little bit of a miscomprehension. People thought that AAA had named um, Fano as perpetrators, uh, but this was not the case. Um, there was one incident, uh, I believe it, it was in relation to, it may have been Delanta Warida. Uh, I don't have the, that specific incident pulled up, but in that incident, uh, the TPLF forces had uh, basically perpetrated massacres in response to defeats that they had suffered by the Fano, the, re the regional Fano. I think the misunderstanding comes because of language barriers. I, I think so. The, 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 the sentence in that particular uh, incident report was actually a little bit complex, so I think there was a little bit of a miscomprehension. But mm -hmm. Fano were not named as uh, perpetrators in any of the atrocities. There were some mentions of the regional security forces of the Amhara regional government, uh, the Amhara state militias, and there was actually just one incident uh, that was in Merawi in which uh, local youth were actually killed. Uh, and it was about four youth that were killed and many that were injured. Uh, so any for us, any number greater than three constitutes a massacre. And so there was that massacre that was perpetrated by the forces of the Amhara regional government, the Amhara Prosperity Party. And that incident was named uh, because those victims, those uh, youth in Merawi were basically uh, refusing to participate in a prosperity party rally and so the regional government took for, it took action to to actually that was uh deadly and so we felt it was necessary to report on all atrocities regardless of the the perpetrators and ultimately this is to exact justice especially for those youth because you know they were they were innocent they were trying to exercise their right they didn't want to be you know um blind government supporters uh, they wanted to be independent-minded, and th that resulted in them being targeted and killed. And so this was a tragic incident, and this was one of the, um, I think, sources of controversy because people interpreted that, and maybe they didn't want the Amhara um, regional government to be blamed, uh, but AAA does not, have, does not share that opinion. We, we, we hold anyone that uh, perpetrates atrocities against the Amhara people accountable, including the regional government uh, or anyone else. And so there was also implications of the Oromi regional government, uh, the Benish Gumu's regional government, uh, and others. And so throughout this report, uh, there's, per, uh, there's crimes perpetrated by state and non-state actors. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Rowil. If there is anything you want to add, you can. Uh, certainly. Thank you, Riot. Uh, really. All I want to say is that this is part of a pattern of reporting from AAA that has been very groundbreaking uh, in a time when it's been difficult to be an advocate for the victims of the Amhara genocide. And so I encourage all uh, everyone that's interested to uh, read the report uh, and really because there's lots of time and effort that was put into it to at least read it as a minimum, but also to any prepare any concerns in a, in a formalized manner uh, whether it's from an individuals or from organizations, uh, registered organizations, uh, and to, to let us know because we want to improve it. We want to, uh, you know, make corrections if necessary. Uh, but this is already making a difference. It's already being sent to and distributed to human rights organizations, to Amnesty Human Rights Watch, uh, and to other uh, international organizations, as well as medias. And this is just part of a pattern of AAA's uh, uh, output and being. Uh, the, one of the foremost organizations contributing towards the um, the raising awareness of the genocide. 
Uh, and there's going to be more reports, uh, so watch out. You can follow AAA on Facebook and Twitter. Um, really, I, I want to also end with the, 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 the slogan of AAA, or the mantra, which is Menkat Madarajat uh, Matagal, Awaken, Organize, Struggle, or Inform, Organize, and Struggle. Uh, and that, I think, has a lot of deep meaning because as a community, uh, we really believe in coming together, strengthening our organizations, and then being able to advocate effectively. And so that takes money, that takes uh, time and energy. We're looking for volunteers, people who have time, uh, several, you know, many hours in a week can reach out to us and offer to volunteer their time to contribute to these uh, reports, uh, as well as, um, you know, being involved in other areas. In addition, uh, in, in terms of financing this work, these human rights investigations, uh, we need more funding to make sure that these uh, investigations can be more comprehensive, can be uh, expanded to other areas because right now the team is limited, there's many restraints. But if we have more funding, we can expand them and ensure that all of the crimes that happen uh, are covered because there's many challenges to this reporting. Uh, in, the, in, in the scope of all of this, really, uh, you know, areas like the Oromia region, the Benishangal Gumuz region, the southern region are very hard to access, especially or particularly. Uh, and these areas are are very hostile to Amhara. So, you know, having the resources to be able to conduct these investigations can help to mitigate some of those challenges. Uh, but with that being said, um, you know, we don't report these things, uh, you know, happily. This, these reports are not meant to uh, show, you know, some type of like delight because these are very uh, terrible crimes that are being reported. Uh, the main, the, the goal of this is just to sort of highlight what's been happening and then to move on towards, uh, you know, raising awareness of the issue and ultimately finding accountability and justice for uh, the, the, the victims, uh, sorry, accountability for, to the, towards the perpetrators and justice for the victims. And so those, those are the ultimate goals. Uh, and yeah, that's that's all I can say. Thank you, uh, Riot. Ah, uh, thank you. When you say men cut the tag, <laughs> you said it correctly. <laughs> I hope you will improve your Amharic and next time we will do our discussion in Amharic. Thank you. I'm a second.